Right, guys, who's going to present first? Yeah. Okay. Can I ask you, remember to be respectful. So when people are up here presenting, what is the worst thing? To talk while they're busy presenting. But also the people that are up here, if somebody is not behaving, behaving, or somebody is not listening, or somebody's on their phone, say to them, please excuse me, face the front, because remember your turn is going to be next. Okay, but this group is relatively good at that. But just remember, sometimes you need to be a, a, a little bit of an authoritarian figure saying, hang on a second, Brandon, please focus. Or Brandon, please, you are very part of this, uh, this particular um, uh, uh, presentation. Please pay attention because we need your, your feedback. Okay, right, so the ladies are going to present. And then after that, the big thing is the 30 marks for your presentation. I just want to go through, some ladies are going to explain to us how we do presentation. And I'm going to show you an example of a fairly bad presentation and why it's bad. Okay, and then some good presentations as well. Sorry, just allow me to say goodbye to you Sydney, thank you so much. Goodbye. Travel safe, all the best. Sydney needs to go play golf. I mean, he needs to go to a meeting. <laughs> We need that dress is far too short. Eh? <laughs> so I wanted to say something just while they while they're busy setting up. You know what I noticed? When 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 people are dealing with, with technology and it's new and it's fun, you guys found the pointer. Refill the uh, um, Bianca and um, Sasha. But you pointed at the screen and you went like this. Remember, if you've got a laser pointer, you need to just slow your actions down. Because you might say, look over there. Look over there. And you're shaking the laser like this, but nobody knows what you're pointing at. So just remember with a laser pointer, slow down a little bit and focus on what you're trying to show your audience. Okay. Just before we get started, remember what I want from you guys. I want you guys to be able to understand exactly the product or the opportunity or need that they're trying to sell to the particular group. The group that's presenting in the front, please define your target audience. So who, whose shoes are these people actually going to fill? Are they customer shoes, etc., etc. Okay, Right, the floor's yours. Time starts now. Teenagers soon to be completing school. I'm advising you to care for your nose hair and to establish an awareness uh, of the impact of your nose hair. So, what we've established is that um, in order to have healthy sinuses in a a continuously uh, increased polluted environment that caring for your sinuses and that includes your nose hair is of great importance. Okay, so <coughs> identifying and understanding the importance of nose hairs, uh, what we actually just... Sorry, I'm totally done with that, but we did, but... Um, so, Effectively, a nose hair is um, the first line of defense for the body um, against infections and allergies. Uh, it provides an additional humidity for inhaled air uh, to protect the respir respiratory system and limits the inhal inhalation of dust entering the airway passages. I wanted to show you guys here is this is the human body or this is a human being that grows from development the, the curve one, the curved part is um, the human life cycle we're starting off from being a baby you have very you have very minimal or almost no nose hair that's why babies are very susceptible to diseases and infections and stuff because there isn't anything to block these um, harmful bacteria from going into the nasal cavity. And as you get older, your nose hair starts thickening and growing more, so giving you added protection from this type of um, infections and bacteria. And then that? 
the immune system. So, so the, the one as, your immune, as your immune system gets stronger, or as you get older, you, you get more nauseous, and you reach a point where um, you start get, when you start getting older, your immune system starts dropping. Okay. And that's when you need like the most amount of nose hair to, 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 to protect you from inhaling the uh, bacteria and stuff. So, Neglecting your sinuses and never <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> what we can see here is the actual sinus cavities, um, how they are formed, and we can see on the right hand side, for instance, drug abuse, the impact that it has on the sinuses. Uh, that gentleman, for instance, assumably on cocaine, has now resulted in him not having any nose here. It's a picture of Brandon. How did you get that? <laughs> Grooming, hygiene, and treatment. Treatment meaning nurses, sprays, and so on to protect you from any diseases, sinusitis, allergies. <laughs> And that's only hit you now. Oh, no. So, in conclusion, um, we all know that nausea is very important to us for our uh, um, personal well being. And, um, yeah. Any questions from the audience? I'm a little bit confused because weren't you guys supposed to develop an opportunity or a need from nose hair? So you were supposed to sell us a product or a, so, so, so you, you, you filled us in quite a bit on nose hair. So now we're all quite, a, and that was really, really good. But what opportunity or need have you, have, have you seen that has arisen as a result of nose hair? Brandon, let's hear. Well, I thought it was, it was great because it was good in the sense that it was very informative. And also, I was a bit upset, I was like, when you thanks, uh, yesterday you good. were good, but like today you excellent, clearly you work better with females. <laughs> <laughs> no, but also your choice of words and uh, you, you did the whole sort of biology, you had the right, you had the right words in terms of nasal cavity and you were using all the, all the right jargon for, for the subject, so I thought that was pretty good. And enjoyed it. <laughs> and, 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 and also I, I did also like the, the graphic the, the Sigmoid curve, yes, very nice yeah. mm -hmm. Very nice So, so the, the product that we actually were going for to try to sell um, Is that we a group of people that wanted to create awareness to other people So that is a product at the end of the day uh, I think it is not So it's a product it's awareness, awareness. It's, yeah. a, it's a, no a non-profit organization We just make people <laughs> Okay, and I didn't pick that up. Was that mentioned right in the beginning? So I wasn't... Yeah. So it was in the mission Okay, sorry, I didn't listen. Okay, I didn't read it. You're right, okay. <laughs> Maybe spend some more time. Creating awareness. Okay, so that, was your, so that was your opportunity or need. Okay, sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And you did that very well. So there will be some twit like me in your group that says, but what is this about? And you say, no, no, we mentioned on side one. And just, here yeah, we go. <laughs> Wasn't paying attention and go back and just reiterate the particular statement. Well done. No. Anything else? And no, hang on a second. Yes, anything yes. else? Who do you address to? Because you didn't tell us. Teenagers. 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 Okay, you, after lunch, eh? Huh? Okay, we're not listening at all, I fear. <laughs> Guys, give them a big hand. And the slide presentation was very good as well. I felt like I was in a doctor's consultation. Very well done. Bianca uh, actually brought up a valid point because she said this is such a ridiculous topic. But that's the reason why I asked you to do it. Because if you can talk about a ridiculous topic, it makes it that much better or easier to talk about something that's real and very much mo too related to your department or function from where you actually come from. Right, can I ask right, Piers' group? Ask group. <laughs> the thorn amongst the roses.
It's pure. Well done. Guys. Refill wear and? Who, who else is? And Nontombi? Yeah. <laughs> Nontombi is going to start first. Okay, let's hear. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nontombi Nwenba, and today we're doing a presentation about a new cream and a product that can attract many women in South Africa. And today we'll be addressing the South African National Board of Medical, med medical sorry, Medical Board. Uh, the name of the cream is Extra Clear. Uh, we're given a topic about pimples. So uh, the opportunity, we have identified a need to introduce a skin creaming, uh, skin bleaching cream targeted at uh, women between the ages of 25 to 55 years old. Um, the reason why we've done that is because we saw that there is a current trade among South African women to go to dermatologists and get their skin bleached and cleared. For example, we all know your cannibals, your shows the celebrities. So with this skin uh, cream, it will make it easier for them to go and purchase it other than going to the dermatologist and spending thousands of money over to your people. <laughs> Now, while doing our research, we have discovered the advantages of using extra clear um, cream. Uh, it removes skin blemishes, age spots. It evens out uh, the skin to remove spots. You can, uh, you, you also have control over the application as the user. It lessens dark patches, freckles, for, even for people who have injuries to their skin, it can also remove that. And we know that most women, when they're pregnant, they have different reactions. And some ladies actually have dark patches and all of that. So it can also help to alleviate that. And even some bad control pills actually have side effects to the skin. So this cream can actually assist in clearing that as we know that women for us uh, self-esteem and our self-image is important so this cream can actually help us to look good unlike just putting on a lot of makeup it also helps that our skin is beautiful and clear now the disadvantages of this cream is that it's currently banned in south africa uh, that's why we are addressing you as the medical council to allow this cream to be sold in South Africa. We are aware that some people are actually smuggling it into the country and using it. So there is an opportunity to actually grow the economy by selling it uh, in the market, unlike in the black market. Uh, the other disadvantage is that it makes uh, skin more sensitive to the sun. So when you use this cream, it's very important because the cream itself does not have um, sunscreen. So when you use it, your skin becomes sensitive. So it's important to also apply sunscreen or wear uh, proper clothing like a hat when you go onto the sun. Uh, the reason we're here is to convince SA authorities to actually review the rules and regulations in allowing this product to be marketed. Uh, there's also allergic reactions. And the best way to avoid this is that once you've bought it, you have to apply it onto a small area of your skin where there's no opening for 24 hours and check for any allergic reactions so it can be avoided. And also for people who have uh, asthma, it's not advisable for them to use it as it can cause asthmatic episodes. Over to our financial <laughs> manager here. Thank you so much. <laughs> My task is, uh, is made very easy by the ladies. So I'll just briefly tell, uh, tell you uh, some benefits about this, uh, this product. First of all, it's very affordable. It's cheap. With 50 rand, you can get a 
a bank of a cream, lotion, and even a soap. So there is a soap, extra, extra clear soap, cream, and even a, even a, the lotion. And uh, the application is very easy. You can apply it two, twice a day, night, morning, morning and night. And also, you have mentioned it before, so you need to be also very uh, cautious when you, you want to use it. You have to test it before, because some people are very allergic. So there is need also to test it before uh, accepting it in the market. And also try to not use it on uh, infants or people who are underage, because it, it can really harm or damage the skin. So thank you very much. Okay. All right, let's get some feedback. Marianne. Okay. Anything else, Sashalia? So it's very good. I think they covered everything. They found an opportunity which is a lot of people's insecurities and weaknesses and addressed that. Mm. Okay. How do you think they could have made it made it better? Sasha? Hmm. Um I think that it was so informative. Um I, I don't know how it would make it better. Maybe um Sorry, you said you were addressing this to the medical board, am I correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, so you said that it was banned in South Africa as one of the disadvantages. Maybe some information on how how it can not be banned. Um, or why it was banned. Or why it was banned. Um, I, I would have added that. <laughs> Remember, a medical <laughs> practitioner, that's the first thing you're going to do. Yeah, you can't go to a medical practitioner and say, like, no, I well, know. <laughs> Did you mention that? No. no. Okay. So yeah. So uh, that product uh, makes the skin, skin darker. No, no. Oh. Like it burns like, the skin. Yeah. It burns the skin. And uh, also, but in 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 a technical way, in a technical te technical term, they use they they say uh, this coloration. It's bleaching. That's why they yeah. say it's a bleaching. Yeah. So. Now, I know that hydroquinine, if you apply it to the skin, yes, it will bleach the skin, but it, naturally the skin becomes thicker to them. So it beca th that's what actually happens, and that's why it's bad. Mm. So I'm a medical practitioner. I'm going <laughs> to say, no. <laughs> so you should have given me more pros. But I think it was really good. Eh? Okay, so the presentation was good, but you still would have disagreed with the product being launched in South Africa, and that's fine. The, uh, that on the medical board. Whereas if, if you were presenting... I think to uh, ladies that just so had honestly, bad skin, speaking, I would have been speaking, like, there is yes, a please. Huge disadvantage compared to advantages. But if no, you compare so. that to no, plastic really. surgery and the illegal bleaching mm. and everything that is happening, this is a much better but option. But yours is illegal bleaching as well, well because, because it's, it's banned. banned. <laughs> yeah, but we, we, we are requesting the rules and regulations to be relaxed. That's why we're going straight to the medical council. Remember that, Remember that question I said, what, uh, what about the what if questions? So have you asked what if from a legal point of view? A person dies from this particular product, what if? How do you solve that particular problem? How do you deal with it? We bury them. Okay, but guys, remember those scenarios. Okay. <laughs> but just remember, in your presentation, I don't want you just to give one solution. So to the board, remember in your presentation, I want you to give maybe a couple, maybe three solutions and say, I think this is the best one. Okay, so maybe you could have given us a, div a couple of scenarios. There is a possibility a person could die from this. This is what we're going to do if that happens. Okay? I suggest that we actually use this particular product from America. It's safer, da 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 da, da and maybe, maybe you'll get the buy-in from the other medical practitioners like uh, uh, Sasha. Okay? 
Okay. okay. But overall, we're looking at the presentation, and it was a difficult one. So you guys did very, very well. But just remember those contingency questions, what ifs. Okay. Well done. Lovely. Well done. Right. Brandon's group. Up you go. Yes. When you cry, I know some girls sweat when they cry. When you laugh, you laugh so hard, your stomach starts cramping and you start sweating. So over to Brandon, we'll give you a little bit more about our easy aircon. What this aircon is, is actually portable and... And we've made it environmentally friendly. It consists of solar-powered batteries, also rechargeable batteries for the weather if the, if the sun is not out. Um, it is portable, so you can sit in your boot or you can move it from class to class. It has automatic functions, as well as you can set temperatures high and low. Um, and also, it's silent, so it doesn't disrupt your class or you while you're doing your presentations. Also, with technology, it's Bluetooth, so you can connect to your phone or to your laptop and you can change your temperature as you go on with your facilitation. Okay. Marianne's going to tell you about the benefits. Okay. Of this product. Thank you. The benefits for Easy Econ are for uh, comfortable meetings, um, conducive learning environment, user friendly, and reduce electrical costs. And uh, it also covers a space of four by four by two meters. Thank you. Okay. In order to promote the effectiveness of our Easy Econ, we have conducted a brief SWOT analysis. Some of the strengths we've included of perspiration is that of body stimulation. When you sweat, you have working sweat glands. Another bodily strength would be that of you ridding excess water in your body. There are three major weaknesses, not major, for a girl, major weaknesses that could contribute to perspiration. One of that being sweat stains, a big factor being that of hygiene, no one wants to smell bad, and then a um, factor could be dehydration as well. When you sweat so much, you need to intake water because you keep losing it. An opportunity from perspiration would be that of manufacturing, manufacturing DOs, antiperspirants, anti um, anti as well as easy aircons. And then a threat to perspiration is that of sickness. When you're sweaty, you're sticky, you're smelly, you're dirty, and could prone, be prone to any sort of sickness. And what is this aircon going to cost you? It's going to cost you 5,000 rand a unit which includes a service plan of 500 rand where they'll come in every three months and clean your solar panels, uh, replace the rechargeable battery if need be, or even just fill up the gas in the, in the gas component. And that's what we can do for you. Any questions? Order your easy air con today. <laughs> okay, give him a hand. Let's see up here. That aircon, does it exist or is it something that is no. in? in oh, it's got battery rechargeable, that's the gas component, there's the solar panel. Just take a picture of it, Pierre wants to steal it. Where can we buy it? Where can we buy it? He wants to buy it today. Is it available? And it's portable. I, I would stand in front of that, Pierre's going to take a picture of it now. now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Munir. Portable, but it's four by two. No, 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 no. I also, 
Yes, but but I also got that. I also thought also thought uh, uh, it's four by two, and then I thought no, that's not portable, and it was the space that it covered was four by two. But I thought the same as you, Mimi. Okay. I also thought the same thing. Eight square meters. How is that portable? You're going to need a very strong back to carry that thing in. Okay, well done. But I think it was superb. You know what I loved about this particular presentation is the way Mary Ann presented and 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 um. Uh, um Introduce the team. Introduce the team, yeah. yes. Introduce yeah. the team. And also that Sashalia has got a certain uh, um, vibe about her. Mary Ann's got a different vibe and then Brandon mm. as well. Mm. And that integration, that interconnectedness of different personality traits can also help with the presentation. Haven't you noticed? Mm. Like when you get an older group, like, like Sasha's group. <laughs> they were, I'm just joking with you, Sasha. I made a big faux pas at Brace. You're never going to let me hear it down to if you get other groups in that, and that, 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 that tone, if that tone's monotone, it can add to the effectiveness of the, of the presentation as well. So I really liked it. It was very vibey. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Very, very vibey. Any other things that you want to chat about? Yes, reveal it. I was just curious. Uh, I, I love the product, but um, I wanted to find out the, the weight for the Okay. I also didn't. I didn't know if I wasn't listening again, but I'm yeah. glad you asked it because I also didn't get that. What is the weight? Because you kept on saying portable. It's made of the new space age technology, carbon fiber. That you know, Lance Armstrong got the bike. So it's very, it's very carbon fiber is very light. Okay. But once again, he's 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 getting around the getting around the yeah. question. But let's say 10 kilograms or whatever, because yeah. it'd have to be around 10 kilograms. Okay, it's going to be about fast. Okay. So a thousand, uh, that's how good you are. A thousand rand a kilogram. There we go. You can, uh, you can boil it down to a thousand rand a kilogram. Give them a big hand. It was really well done. Guys, I hope you found that, that meaningless exercise most meaningful. <laughs> because it was all about preparing you for your second part of your PMA. You see how relevant that is to your, to your second part of your PMA. And I just want to spend some time now. I know um, Bianca and uh, Sasha are going to help me. And I've got an example of a so-so assignment, the presentation side of the assignment, and some examples of slide presentations. And I just want to show you, I'm going to put them up, and I want you to give me feedback, whether you think it's good, how can we make it better, how can we design the slide better. What is an important thing about a slide presentation? Lighting. Mm. So do you mind if I switch this off? Mm. No dark glasses, Marianne. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> okay, guys, so the first one that we've got is... Uh, where's that? I don't know if you guys watched uh, or if you guys watch CNN Euros. Do you watch CNN Euros? Mm -hmm. CNN Euros. Um, it's uh, these people that have gone into communities and made a difference. And funny enough, Brandon and uh, Sashil and Mary Ann's presentation reminded me of it. It's called the Solar Suitcase. I don't know if you've heard of it. And there's a stat in Central Africa. And I don't know what it is. I think it's about 1%. or it's a little bit over 1%. So that means for every 100... Uh, for every... Um, thousand babies approximately a hundred so ten ten mothers will die giving childbirth as a result of lights sure. there's no lights and they actually showed you this lady um, uh, delivering a child with the use of a cell phone she's got a cell phone in her hand and she's helping this other lady deliver sure. as a result of bad 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 lighting so this particular non-government organization, they came up with the solar suitcase. So it's very similar to what you guys have done. They came up with the solar suitcase. It costs $1,490. So that's what, that's what about 16,000 rand. But this particular suitcase gives light anywhere, in the bush anyway. So it's for these medical teams and it can be mounted onto, onto a wall as well and it's portable. Have you seen it? It's a, a, a absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal product. Okay. So it's related back to that. When you see a need or an opportunity, you design something and you actually start selling it and you make a difference in a community. Okay. Uh, sorry, this was Sydney's assignment that I was just showing him. Um, if we look at the, the presentations that I've got here, guys. The first one, do you, do you mind if I sit? Eh? Okay, so the first one, uh, let's just look at this nose hair one. Okay, so I just did a nose hair one of myself, of my, my, by myself. Nose hair, need or irritation. So once again, I've just basically gone in there and I've said, okay, how do I design my slide? So on your, who is not au fait with designing slides at all? Who's never done it before? 
Everyone, everyone in the class okay with it? Okay, great. So just give me a little bit of feedback. How do we do it, Pierre? <laughs> I want to say I, I, I wanted to say that no, but I'm not really really good at okay. slides. Okay, you can you can you can uh, speak us through this, Bianca. Where do we go into? Into oh. Word. No. Oh. PowerPoint. 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 A Word application, and then from there, what do you do? You go into Home. Home, and what do you do from there? You can go into a new slide. If you want to go into design, you go into design, and I can choose any one of these. Now, what's important here is your background. So say, for example, I go and I choose a black background. You have to look at your particular audience. Now, I'm glad you guys are all sitting there because you can see. Straight away, I put that on, and so Charlie, I went, so do that. Do that experiment. Say to yourself, how does that look? How does that look? Does that look a little bit better? Okay, and you guys are going to have to determine which... Which color works better? Which uh, 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 layout, which setup wor works, uh, works better? Say, for example, I want to insert something. I just go to insert. Let's say it's clip art, and we can insert whatever clip art we want. If we want to insert photos, let's say we want to insert photos. We go, we find the file on the disk. We put it on. It's going to give us a preview, and we can actually download it from there. This also works nicely from a, from a graphical representation point of view. Let's say we want to put that there in there. Then all we do is we go down. And we will look for that particular format. So let's say we want to, we want something like this, with this. So you say okay, and straight away it's going to be there. But now look what happened. It's actually superimposed it over your last uh, uh, bit of work. So you're going to have to first delete all of that. So maybe it's a three-step or a three-phase uh, um, diagram that you're trying to show. So this shows it very, very nicely. Okay. So you don't have to physically go in and draw these things. They're already done for you. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's just one example. Remember your, your, your slide design. You're going to go there. Designs, that's going to be there. Th that's the fonts, the colors, and the effects are there as well. Anything else? What about this here? Insert. Uh, sorry, not insert home. Uh, new slide. And then it gives you the type of design that you actually want to design your new slide. So do you want it like this? Do you want it like that? Do you want a picture in the middle? Do you want it split in two like that there? You with me? So you want to compare this to that. So maybe perspiration to non-perspiration, nose hair to no nose hair. Okay, so that, that kind of slide would be beneficial there. I'm going to show you, the, show you the other slide presentation. And this was um, other slides that I just had. So if you look at the first one, give me some feedback there. Really it's a risk medical emergencies, what to do. Right, so and, and, and as... Because I did that, it's forcing you to read it carefully and then... Okay, but Bianca's also saying you can't really see it, correct? Yeah. So maybe my font size is shocking, okay? My font size has to be looked at. Maybe it needs to be made, made uh, bigger, especially if you've got people in the group who, are, uh, who battle with their eyesight. And you put up something like that, you're going to lose your audience straight away. So font size, very, very important there. What about this background? You think it's a good thing or a bad thing? I also think it's quite bad. Okay, I actually wanted Bianca to put up her last uh, um, slide presentation because if I put up this and I say um, uh, slideshow from current slide, look at what happens. I actually sometimes I can't see the border of that particular slide. So it's kind of and if that's the, if that's what you want to achieve, that's fine. But sometimes you can lose an audience as well. Okay, so so that's the second one. But if you look at that first one. I would definitely try and centralize it. I would change my font and maybe try and bring the reader in. How could I have brought the reader in better here? There's nothing attractive. There's nothing attractive there at all. Bianca's group, so Bianca, uh, um, uh, Sasha and uh, Munir, nose here. And what did they have? They had a picture of a lady's nose with those uh, beautiful long pieces of hair coming out of <laughs> their nose. It's lovely. Straight away we know what we're talking about. And what happened to the group? The group laughed. So straight away, from, a, from an emotional point of view, from, a, from, a, from a, a, um, a kind of tempo point of view, you're actually setting the tempo, and it's a relaxed 100%. Uh, okay? So that first slide is very, very important. It could be serious, or it could be more comical. Just look what, I, I noticed that nobody's picked up what I've got at the bottom here. What is this about? Notes. Notes. Excellent. Okay. So this is what I'm going to be looking at when I mark your assignment. So 
uh, with the notes, I don't want to just see seven slides. I'm looking at those notes at the bottom. Sorry, now our pointer has gone dead. But the notes at the bottom where it says, talk about the risks associated with the medical problems and emergencies. Remember, now look at this, guys. It shows me that I know my audience. Remember to include Bob Smith as he's head of risk. Also, Sue Robinson might be able to offer input around past experiences as she was a nurse for five years. Okay, so that's the kind of feedback I'm looking at. I'm not saying you must give something exactly like that, but just showing, t showing me that you know who you're actually presenting to and how you're going to incorporate them into your presentation. Is everyone okay with that? Everyone okay with that, Sasha? You're all right. Okay, so that there, remember, you're going to photostat these notes. That will be in front of you. And what is your, what is your audience going to see? The actual slide. They're not going to see that bit at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Only you're going you're gonna to actually see that. Does, that. does that make sense, guys? And when I go, yeah, just look on the, on the left-hand side where my, where my point is. If I go outline, that whole outline is going to be there. Exactly what is on every single slide. Okay, the reason why I've done this, just look at this here. If, 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 um, just look at those there, and let's just go to that slide. I want to show you what I'm trying to prove there. And what I'm trying to show you is that if you use, and this, uh, I can't tell you how many times this happens, people present or, or design a particular slide, it looks great, but they use the incorrect correct font color, and you can't even read the slide. I also get slides as well from some individuals. I, I, don't know, I don't know why it happens. I still haven't quite figured it out. I don't know if they scan the slide in, but the slide is out of focus. Mm. I cannot put a, put a slide on a particular screen where it's out of focus, guys. Mm. Okay, so remember that presentation that I'm marking, it's a presentation that you will use when presenting to that particular group. So it, it must be 100% correct. So this particular font size here, look what I've, written, look what I've done here. Let's just go to uh, from current slide. And I said, you see all the, and then look, the M's are gone. Why are the M's gone? You see over here? Sorry, as I say, my point is gone. The M's are gone over here. There were actually M's there. Why? Because my font color was black. If you've got black on black, you're not going to have anything. But people make these mistakes. Look at the next one. I said, what happens? And I wrote in red. White. And look at the purple or the dark blue. You battle to see it. If you've got people in the group, that are, that are, that are colorblind, they're going to battle to read that particular slide. So you need to make sure that your background is more conducive to the group that you're presenting to. How would you make sure, how would you do your homework before the time to make sure what, which slide would work? I was going to actually ask, uh, check with my boss and maybe I could present to my actual procurement uh, and then just get feedback from them. Of what they think of so the maybe slides. like a mock presentation, 100%. Just have a little quick mock, mock presentation, even if you present to one another. And say, what do you think of this? And the person can say, you know what, I actually don't like that background. Okay, but I chose this background because the product is this color and the packaging is that color and that's why we actually did it. And then that's may maybe it's conducive, but if you need to change that font color or the background color, think about it, guys, and just always play around with those fonts. Which one do you think is most effective there? The white. The white. The green one. The green one. Oh, you're, not, you're, not, you're not colorblind, eh? and, I'm, and I'm being serious. Oh, you're not colorblind. You haven't got any problems with your eyes or anything? No. Okay. And uh, anybody else? The red? No, it's okay. The whole group doesn't really like the red. But generally, the white stands out, correct? Mm. But the purple, you can't even see. The green, who battles to see the green? Some people might battle to see the green. Do you battle? It's just a bit... Wishy-washy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. It does. It can sometimes look a little bit blurry. So just remember that, guys. Your font and your font size is very, very important, and the color as well. Okay, that was the one example. And then um, okay, this was just another, another presentation where I just showed you, I, I, I was trying to show that if you use a different background, If you use a different background, it actually creates a different mood in that particular slide. Mm. So what have I done now? I've got a time frame on when it must move from one slide to the next. So if I go back to my previous slide, and uh, I pause it there, I just want to look at that, that, that particular flow. Okay? Does that aid the particular design of the slide, that particular flow? 
Maybe you're talking about sigmoid curves. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're talking about, I don't know, ice streams or water. That would, that, would, that would be very, very significant from a water point of view, correct? Mm -hmm. What else? And colors has a calming effect. Colors have a calming effect. Don't you feel better with a blue background as opposed to that black background? Mm -hmm. So remember, that's what I'm looking at in that second part of the PMA. I'm looking at the design. So there's a lot of marks that will go towards the design of that particular slide. The colors that you have chosen. Would you, would you object to us to just use, because my company's got a standard AEL. I haven't got a problem with that at all. No. So in other words, it's branded. I haven't got a problem with that at all. It's standard template. I haven't got a problem with that at all. I'm gonna, may, maybe you can play a little bit no, with, with, the, with the color. The color and whatever, yes, but not, like I said, I that's that's like perfect. I haven't got a problem with that. Remember, branding in your slides is also very very important. So the branding, very very important. Any other questions, guys? Any other questions? I just want to go through this one here. Yeah? Uh, this was a slide presentation that was um, given by a particular person. So what this person did is their first slide. They said. I'll just, I'll just go through it. Uh, and their first slide, you see it comes up nicely. Their first slide is Project Osaka. So I know they're talking about Project Osaka. It's presented by and it's the date. Remember, that's also very important. So it shows, it gives us a start time and an end time. So uh, the next slide, Executive Summary. Now look what happens next. Mission Statement. Now she's only got seven slides. But the second slide was executive summary, which is okay. And the next slide, mission statement. Do you think that more, it should have been more specific? How do you think she could have made that better? Let's just go back there. The first one was executive summary. So she, so she said the need identified is the need for Covidian to acquire their own office and warehouse space. The current premises are no longer big enough for staff members and warehouse product, products. And then she's moved on and she said, uh, mission statement, the mission of this project is to construct or build our own Covidian offices and a warehouse in Woodmead, Johannesburg, by the 28th of February, 2014. I would have swapped them around. I would have swapped them around and maybe even put this on the first slide, mm. this particular mission statement. Yeah. She's wasted three slides. She's shown the audience three slides, and basically she's only told them what she's doing in the third slide, but she could have actually done it in the first slide. You hear, you hear what I'm saying, guys? Mm. So don't remember your executive summary. Where am I going to see that? In the first part of your assignment because that's your business case and your executive summary and your mission statement is going to be there it's important from a presentation point of view that your mission statement is there the why the what and for whom is there and that's basically what she's answered here does that make sense mm -hmm. okay bianca you got a question although she's the person who wrote this presentation everything is put very deliberately the mission statement 